Welcome back. In this video, we're going to study the concept of inverse variation, the natural offshoot from our previous video on direct variation. An inverse variation takes the form of y equals k divided by x, different than direct, which was y equals k times x. But still, k is the constant of variation or the constant of proportionality. And we can solve for k from y equals kx, and we do so, we get x1 times y1. So we have y equals k over x. We want to get x out of the denominator, so mul multiply both sides by x. The x's cancel. We've isolated k, and k equals x times y. So our constant of proportionality in an inverse variation is the product of the coordinates of the ordered pairs. And there's two ways to evaluate an inverse variation. We can use the equation y equals k over x and substitute two of the three things and solve for the third. Or we can solve as the product of the two ordered pairs we're working with. Now you'll need three of the four coordinates of the two ordered pairs, but since k in the same inverse variation is equal, k will equal k, well then x1, y1, or k, will equal x2, y2. k, k equals k, or x1, y1 equals x2, y2. For example, if y varies inversely with x, and y is 4 when x is 0.8, well, we want to solve for k. Find the constant of variation. Well, k equals x times y. So if y is 4 and x is 0.8, k will equal 0.8 times 4, or k equals 3.2. So our equation would be y equals 3.2 over x, or x times y equals 3.2. So the product of any ordered pair in this inverse variation has to equal 3.2. So given the inverse variation above, find y when x is 20. Well, there's a couple ways to do that. We can just use the equation. We know what x is, so we could say y equals 3.2 divided by 20. Pull out our calculator, and y equals 0.16, or 16 one hundredths. If we wanted to reduce that, there's a multiple of 4 that we can simplify in 16 over 100, and that would be the fractional equivalent of 4 25ths. So we have the ordered pair here of 20, 4 25ths. And the other ordered pair, of course, um, when x is 0.8, when y is 4. So we could also do this as a, a product of the two. I think in my notes here, I see I've got two ordered pairs, correct? I've got the ordered pair 0.8, comma 4. And the other ordered pair is 20 something. Why? Well, I know 0.8 times 4 equals 20 times y. And I'm going to end up with the exact same situation. And divide both sides by 20. And sure enough, 0.8 times 4 over 20 equals my y, or 3.2 over 20. 
So either way, we're going to get the same particular answer. Let's take a look at a typical inverse variation problem. Inverse variation problems, a lot of times we'll use like the teeter-totter, the fulcrum situation, or the springs. Springs are also good inverse variation problems. So the distance from the center of a fulcrum varies inversely with the weight of the object. So we have an inverse variation here. If Ryan, weighing 100 pounds, is seated 3 feet from the fulcrum, how far from the fulcrum does Dan, weighing 150 pounds, have to sit in order to balance with Ryan? Set up an equation or a proportion and solve. We're going to set up an equation here. So, well, let's take a look. What's our ordered pair going to look like? We know that y depends on x. And we also know that distance depends on weight. How far we are from the fulcrum depends on how much we weigh. So weight or x is our independent variable and distance is our dependent variable or y. So Ryan weighing 100 pounds is seated 3 feet from the fulcrum is the ordered pair 103. And Dan weighing 150 pounds is seated how far? from the fulcrum. Why? So I know that I have to multiply my ordered pairs in an inverse variation. So 100 times 3, x times y, equals 150 times y. And I want to solve for y, so I divide both sides by 150. And 100 times 3 is 300, divided by 150. And a little bit of mental math tells us that y is equal to 2. So looks like Dan's got to be seated 2 feet from the fulcrum of our teeter-totter. So our constant of variation in this is 300. We know that x times y equals k. So 100 times 3 equals 300. So then 150 times y also has to equal 300. In fact, I could choose any weight I wanted. 75 times some y has to equal 300. 25 times y equals 300. So that's the k. The k in this particular inverse variation is constant. So no matter what the weight is, we know to solve for the distance, the weight times the distance must always equal 300. That's one way to tell something is an inverse variation. So that wraps up the concept of inverse variation, and we will see you in class.